What's up everyone? My name is Sonic Kokak and welcome back to another video. I hope you guys are doing well. I'm doing absolutely fantastic now that I have this baby here over with me. I've tried to record this video multiple times but never really conveyed the clear message that I wanted to say really and I did miss some information so trying again. <laughs> Hopefully this time we get everything right. So first of all this is my Lenovo Yoga 730. It has a Core i5 quad core 8250U processor with a GTX 1050 GPU and 8 gigabytes of RAM and a gloss full HD 250 to 300 nit display that has around 90% sRGB and more like 60% of Adobe RGB. And, um, you know, this is my current laptop. It has the great Lenovo keyboard layout and all that stuff. And uh, it's a convertible. It's a convertible laptop. You know, you can fold it all the way back if you want to. And, you know, that's really cool. So this has been the laptop that I've been using for the past year. It is now a year old almost. Uh, when September hits, that's when it's a year old. I can with great confidence say that this is a great laptop. With the price point that it was at, so I bought it for 1077 with three years of warranty instead of two, so do keep that in mind. Mine was a bit more expensive because I went with more warranty. But this laptop held up very, very well. Despite the fact that the Wi-Fi cutouts kept on happening and I had to replace the Wi-Fi card in order for me to get anywhere decent Wi-Fi performance and to make it not cut out all the time, the real tech one that was in here was just awful, atrocious, and I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. Many people that have bought this laptop have swapped over to a different Wi-Fi card that just purchased off of Amazon, put that in there, and then stopped having problems. And of course, most of your subscribers out here have seen me with this thing and are here for this thing because you purchased one of these with many complaints as well. Screen flickering, the Wi-Fi cutouts, GPU thermal throttling, processor thermal throttling, terrible heat issues, whining fan noise, coil whine, list keeps going on and on. And I have only experienced the Wi-Fi cutouts. My ears are not as good as most people, so that's probably why the fan noise doesn't bother me. Yes, it can sound like an airplane taking off, and depending on how good your ears are, it will sound very loud or muffled. In my case, quite muffled, so uh, it's not bothering me, but it's bothering a lot of you guys. The reason I am getting this thing then, this is the Dell XPS 15 7590 15-inch model with a GTX 1650, a Core i7 9750H, and 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. And then a, a full HD, 400 nit, 100% sRGB, and like 90% to 80% Adobe RGB, and it's matte. So this laptop is gonna be replacing that one. The reason being the display, most obviously, but also the battery. This one has a, what was it? A 56, no, 52 watt hour battery, something along those lines. I'll put a correction up on screen. And this one has a 97 watt hour battery. That is a huge difference. This is about 100% more battery life. Well, I mean, you could argue that. Of course, it has a more powerful CPU, a more powerful display, a more powerful GPU. The reason I really wanted this thing is because of the screen and the battery life. So this thing can go anywhere between 8 to 12 hours of battery life consistently. Whereas with this thing, you really had to push your limits with the display brightness and undervolting in order to get this thing to the battery life of this thing. So while this thing is great for indoors use and you have a charger nearby just in case, I mean, you can do an eight hour work day on this, but stay inside, don't push the brightness of the screen, keep it around 30, 40% and you'll be fine in an eight hour work day. This thing can do it, it can do it. I wouldn't recommend it, but uh, it is possible. And because of the gloss display, it's gonna become even more difficult during the day, you know, you know the scenario, the window, it, you're, you're next to a window in your office, the sun is shining through, you are seeing the reflections of yourself on the screen. If In case of my, me, I got a white shirt, so that's even worse. And in that case, 
this display just won't cut it because that means you need to put up the brightness to counteract that reflection. Not the case with this thing. This thing blurs out almost all of the reflections. Almost, I say. Uh, and of course, there's going to be some bright scenarios where that's not the case. But you will not be able to make out any objects. So with this thing, it's clearly a mirror. It is ridiculously sharp when it comes to mirroring. So I was filming this in the afternoon and the entire living room was white and I can see the wall, the TV, the camera, all the reflections that you can possibly see in this screen, I have seen. This thing, I couldn't make out a single thing apart from a slight glow of the wall, which was slightly white, which means that the black of the screen was slightly less black. But other than that, I couldn't make out a single object on this screen. The matte performance is so good that actually here inside, I can keep it at minimum brightness and still be able to see everything correctly with the right colors. That is a huge deal because with the matte screen, I have to push the brightness less far and that means that I can actually save more battery. So that's also a good thing. So to, I really want to talk about the similarities and the differences between the laptops, especially because I'm um, remember this thing is replacing this thing. It is really your first impressions of this thing, but as well as having a mirror reflection of this thing, because this is what it's replacing. And I want you guys to know the differences and what I'm giving up and what I'm getting. F first thing first, uh, the unboxing experience uh, wasn't as smooth as the Lenovo one. And that's simply because their box was simply fancier. I mean, Lenovo puts a lot of like effort into their unboxing experience, I have to say, especially of the higher end models. And you know, that looks awesome. So on the Lenovo one, it was a slightly bit better, but you know, this thing comes away with it because it comes with practicality in mind and all that sort of stuff. So the unboxing experience, uh, what did I get in the unboxing, apart from the laptop itself, is the power brick, which is super handy by the way, because it's designed to wrap the cable around and it has a little like clip to clip it stuck to the rest of the cables and that's very compact. It's much more compact than what my Lenovo could do, which is just this awful brick and yes, you have some Velcro to keep the cables together, but this is a little bit more bulkier than this. You can obviously see. I mean, of course, you still need to get this cable with it, but you can roll that up as well, and it would still be smaller than this collection here. So this is much more thoughtful, and it is slimmer. It is about the same as... So it's a little bit longer, a little less thick, but overall much more compact and easier to put in your bag than this thing. This thing is just a brick of plastic. This thing is nicely rounded, no hard corners or whatever. It's a nice power brick. And oh yeah, this is a 60, uh, 90 watt adapter from the Lenovo. And then the Dell one is a 130 watt adapter. So that is a lot more power than what my previous laptop had. So you know what, that's really cool. Uh, speaking of power delivery, this thing also charges over USB-C. So that is also cool. But I wasn't able to do it with my phone charger. My phone charger is a 20 watt adapter from my uh, OnePlus. It cannot charge this thing. I think you need to have a minimum of 60 watts or so. So try and invest in something with a little bit more power. I don't know if OnePlus's warp charger might be able to charge this thing. I don't know what the minimum wattage is, but if I can find it, I'll put it up on the screen. And you know, with that wattage, you can actually charge this laptop through USB-C, like with a phone charger, if it is powerful enough. From on the unboxing experience into opening the laptop, when installing Windows, this one way better. Because the Lenovo Yoga came equipped with Cortana in mind. So it was really trying to push forward the amazing mic setup that this thing has through software, of course, the mic is still shit, but through software, it could like determine how much people should listen to, like noise canceling on the microphone. So that's really cool. But overall, the installation process where it was much smoother simply because it is clean. There is no Cortana bullshit. It is just the installation of Windows and that's it. And it's pretty fast. So with that in mind, with Windows being installed, then once you have installed it, this thing is clean. Like I'm talking no bloatware. The only thing that come pre-installed is Netflix, which is a plus, and Dropbox, which in some people is also a plus. So you know, that's great. Other than that, it just has a couple of Dell software that nobody talks about, but everyone should be talking about. Like 
every tech reviewer I've ever seen in Dell has never talked anything about the Dell software that comes integrated with this thing that by the way talks directly to the BIOS of this laptop. I've looked at the BIOS of this thing, I'll put some recordings up on screen here, but it's basically the exact same stuff that you can actually find in the applications here in the laptop itself, which are Dell Power Manager, the Cinema Color, although, although Cinema Color is not really managed through the BIOS, but still. Uh... There is however a problem with Cinema Color for Dell. It really changes the screen to weird colors and hues and it just doesn't look good. I don't actually know why they put it in here, but hey, it's there. And the battery application allows you to set it to whether or not you're primarily an AC user, whether you're primarily on the battery or you need to keep it full all the time, you want to charge as fast as possible, or do you want to tell it specifically when to start and stop charging? So if battery life of this big ass battery is something that is really important to you and you want to preserve its life cycles, you really want to pay attention to that application. Just set it up once, set it up to something. If you're primarily on AC, of course, set it to primarily AC use. And you know, that's gonna help prevent the battery from dying too fast. So from the Windows experience on, again, this thing was bloated at that point. It had McAfee on it. It had some other stuff on it that came pre-installed that I had no business with at all. A couple drawing tools, that sort of thing. Some, you know, some ads that they put on the, the laptop to make a little bit of money off. People are going to uninstall it anyways. Like MSI is the biggest like contributor to all this problem is that they keep stuffing their laptops with bloatware. Dell completely clean. I have to say that although the Windows boots a lot slower on this one compared to this one, this thing boots way faster. And you know what? I'll actually show you here. So the Dell boots slower, but at the same time, it has stuff ready a lot faster once you're booted. So once you're booted and you touch the fingerprint sensor, which by the way on the Dell is much faster than on the Lenovo and much more accurate, um, the actual launch time of getting into Windows is faster on the Lenovo. And you'll see that as I demonstrate now. So three, two, one. And uh, well, we'll see. So the Lenovo one splash screen is already up and it's already booted. Then you have to touch the fingerprint, which is super highly inaccurate, but when it does get it, there it goes, it boots, and it takes a little time. It's loading all the icons and all that stuff. On the Dell, see, it's now just starting to get into Windows, but watch this. As I now touch the touch, now it goes in and everything is already loaded. That is very funny because the Dell has a much slower SSD as far as I'm concerned. I'll put the actual read and write speeds on screen here, but as far as I'm concerned, and as far as I know of the previous Dell models, is that the Dell always had the slower SSD, about half speed of this thing. Okay everyone, so as you can see, there's clearly something up with my expectations. The Dell is consistently going fast with very high write speeds compared to the Lenovo, and decent read speeds and it's very consistent whereas the Lenovo over three runs I've done three runs on both laptops the Lenovo was the most inconsistent with the higher read speeds but much lower write speeds and small file sizes well are equally the same but then again slower on the Lenovo and also much more inconsistent so this thing has 3000 on the read and 1500 on the write and this thing has about 1500 on the read and 500 or 1000 on the right, something along those lines. So despite that, this thing loads, I, I mean, when it gets loaded, faster, which is super strange. I don't know what is the case or what is happening. It depends on really what you want. Do you want something that loads really fast or do you want something that loads reliably? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it really comes down to what you want, but I don't know, I, 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 while it takes longer for this thing to boot, it seems to be like everything is already loaded once you are booted. Like no bullshit coming up on screen, that sort of stuff. I mean, of course, if you install stuff like Steam, that will come up. But other than that, it's a very, very clean experience and I love it.
then I want to get talking to the differences between Lotto. And I know this is a very long video, I know, but it's the differences and uh, first impressions at the same time. So it's, thank you for sticking around, really, thank you. But we're now going to be talking about the I.O. So, first of all, on the Lenovo, right? On the left side of the Lotto, we got a headphone jack, a USB Type-A port, and a power adapter. And then also a very tiny reset button that you can only really touch with a paper clip or a SIM card removal tool. Then on the right side of the Lenovo, there is another USB Type-A, a full-size HDMI port, that is, I think, HDMI 1.4. And then there is a Thunderbolt 3 port that supports PCI Express and two lanes of them. So two lanes of them, and that's not really a lot. Um, it means that an eGPU is not really going to be a good option for this. Although there are many people that also say it is four PCI Express lanes, but I think, and this is how I would do it, is I think this one is two lanes because it has a dedicated GPU, and then the 13 inch has the four lanes because it doesn't have a GPU. So that's how I think it is. And then there's also the power button here on the side, and yeah. You know, that's the I.O. for the Lenovo. So then it comes to the Dell. Well, let's see. On the left side of the laptop, we got a power in. We got USB type A. We got a, and I think that's 3.1 Gen 2. Not quite sure. I'll put it up on screen, I guess. And then there is a full size HDMI 2.0 port, I think. But again, I'll have to clarify on screen. And then a Thunderbolt 3 port that supports power delivery as well as four lanes of PCI Express. So you can also still hook up a external monitor up to 4K60, I think. And then also uh, docking stations, whatnot. And again, you can charge through it. So that's really, really cool. And of course the eGPU support if you want to. Um, and then there's also a headphone jack. And then on the right side, there is a super tiny Kensington lock a power indicator, if you press it, it will show you the level of power, another USB type A port, and a full size SD card reader. So that is something that I'm very happy about, the SD card reader. It is a really good thing to have, and I've tested the speed already, and it can definitely support the speeds of my SD cards up to 90 megabit megabytes per second. So that's really cool to see a full speed, full size SD card reader in laptops again, because the previous ones that I always had, a terrible SD card readers. These ones are actually good. So another difference is, well, I guess the touchpad. Um, the Dell is smoother, while the Lenovo is metal, obviously. But the Dell is smoother. It will get some finger like grease on it, so clean it when you need it. Um, on the Lenovo, you won't see that sort of stuff because it's metal. But on the Dell, you definitely would have to clean it. It's some kind of soft touch material on the Dell. And again, on the Lenovo, it's metal. And then they both have Windows Precision drivers, so that's not very much different. When it comes to the keyboard layout, I actually prefer the Dell, which is weird because, well, the spacing is exactly the same. The spacing between the keys is exactly the same. I mean, if I look at it, the Dell has even more spacing, but the keys are the same size. So I don't know how that really factors in. But the key layout has changed a lot from Dell over the years. Uh, previously, they had the page up and down, right next or on top of the right and left arrow key. That was horrible design, and that was just terrible because if you were scrolling through a page, you would do page up, page down. When you didn't want to, that was awful. They fixed that. Now it's all on the arrow keys the way I want them to, just like on the Lenovo. The only difference being between those two, a slight size difference between the backslash and then also uh, the fact that the arrow keys on the Lenovo are bigger uh, while the up and down arrow keys remain the same size right below each other. But you know what? I actually prefer to delve to this one because now there's actual distinction with like where the arrow keys are in comparison to the upper arrow key. It's, it just feels better on the Dell despite the Lenovo having bigger keys. I prefer for actually the layout of the Dell. Then also when it comes to the keyboard, the, the Lenovo types a lot softer because when I was typing on the Lenovo, I not have to press as hard. The Dell you have to press a little bit harder and you'll get used to it quite fast. I took about an hour to get used to this keyboard, but it feels really solid and much more sturdy than the Lenovo. But then again, the Lenovo types much smoother, but it also prompts you to more inaccurately type. This thing has actually a good amount of tactile feedback, I'd say. 
and that's something I just don't get to the Lenovo. I mean, I do, I do. There is a point at which you feel the bump. There is a bump. Uh, on the Dell, it's the exact same bump, I have to say. Now I'm feeling it. It is the exact same bump, but it takes a, just a little bit more force. So you have to be a little bit more intent on pressing the keys in order to get that going. The same goes for the power button, actually. The power button is located here on the top right of the Dell and on the side of the Lenovo. And on the side of the Lenovo, you actually press it accidentally quite often, which is problematic. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you can see why, because you know, you know you hold your hand down there and then the second you try to pick it up, sometimes I touch the power button, it happens. On the Dell, it's a much better solution. It is also the fingerprint sensor, so that's really cool. And you know, you have to press a little bit harder on the Dell to actually get the power going. Because first you touch the fingerprint sensor, then there is some sort of sleep position, and then when you press it really hard, it starts to boot. I don't know how that is, but it does take a little bit of force uh, I'm sure it's not. I think I'm sure it has something to do with the fingerprint sensor, but yeah, you do have to press it a little bit harder. Then, of course, the screen. Well, this one can fold, but you know that one can't fold. You know, but it doesn't need as much brightness. Like I said, this thing can go hella bright. That was half brightness. Now it's at full brightness, and it's so much brighter than this one. It's literally twice as bright and about as bright as my phone. So that's really cool because I can use my phone in sunlight with sunglasses on. And maybe I can do that with this one now as well. I'm not going to say that you should, but you can. And that's the cool thing. I've already used this thing outdoors in the sunlight and it looks so much better. I'm actually very comfortable sitting outside now with this laptop and setting this brightness to not even full brightness, but 75% brightness or so. And you could definitely see what's going on on the screen. Just make sure that your backgrounds and everything are still white. White is easier to make out than black. So... Uh, if you want to get better contrast and all that stuff, definitely make sure that you are in the light modes, not in the dark mode of Windows. It will be easier to read. But mm, that is much more the case with this thing. With the Dell, I would say that even with dark mode enabled on a lot of the apps, you can still read a lot on it. I have to say that I really like this display and the fact that it can go to 400 nits is awesome. And you know, when it, like I said, when it comes to battery saving, you don't actually have to push it that far because of the matte screen. So you can actually save some more battery. And indoors, you can actually put it to 50% or even 25% with still being able to perfectly read the screen. Like, even at the lowest, like at the lowest brightness, I can still see this indoors. In this room, this is actually great. And of course, you can bump that up by two clicks and there you have another great position and then if you go a little bit further it is let's see like 50 percent brightness it is exactly as bright as this one so this thing can definitely go twice as bright so i would say when people say keep the screen at 250 nits to save battery i'm thinking they talk 50 percent on this one again i don't have any measuring tools so i can't give you the exact nits that it's giving off right now but i would say 50 percent or so would be 250 nits or a little lower than that well, it actually goes up to the 300s now, I think, but I, will, 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 I, I can't calculate that, I'm sorry, but one day I can, okay? Just keep subscribing, and hopefully one day I'll be able to afford one of those color, like, gamuts, testers, something like that. Yeah, then I also want to talk a little bit about the design. So, the Dell has an aluminum top, uh, as well as the Lenovo, so they're both aluminum metal on the top. Uh, at the bottom, the Dell is also metal, and you know what? People have always looked at this XPS logo, and no one ever asks any questions about it. I find it very weird, because it's actually quite interesting. So with laptops that you need to return, they also want the serial number, they want some extra stuff, you usually tear off those stickers, or something damages it, or the water gets over it, and you can't read it anymore. Well, here, all the serial numbers are below this little hatch. It's magnetic. And uh, yeah, it just holds the serial number, that's it. So the serial number, all the data that you need, and all the certifications that it has are all under this hatch. So for the people that didn't know that, that's where it's positioned. And yeah, it's the same torque screw design uh, on the bottom of the laptop. I mean, you might wanna open it up once or twice, once for upgrading the SSD if you want to, and then another time for like thermal paste, like redoing the thermal paste. Although this thing keeps relatively cool for what it is doing. Um, there are a couple of settings that you need to change though in the uh, settings of extreme tuning utility of Intel. Because this thing chugs way too much power for the turbo boost. 
of this thing. It's ridiculous, but we'll get over that in a few other minutes. Because this thing does use a lot of power and it needs to be limited. This is a beast and it needs to be tamed. Let's put it that way. But gaming performance on this thing is gonna be great. I'm gonna put up some gaming videos on this thing as well, while presenting the frame rates and the consistency of it. I will present that. I'll probably play some Rainbow Six Siege because that's one of my uh, favorite games to play. And I'll play it on here and uh, you guys will be able to see the way that that goes. I'm also going to try and put a D-brand skin on this because I don't want to damage the metal. Oh yeah, and also on the sides of the Dell, of course the Lenovo is completely metal, but the sides of the Dell, it has some soft touch material here. And I think that is really good because it means that it's not going to damage the metal that's underneath it. So it's kind of like a rubber bumper. Don't see it as a bumper, don't bump it into anything. But I'm just saying that the soft touch material, while it looks plastic, is some kind of rubber and it just wraps around the actual metal. Uh, when it comes to cooling this thing, it's super strange because it takes air in from here on the bottom of the laptop and then it pushes it out through this tiny little gap here, which I think is not very good. It doesn't have a lot of places where air can go at all. Like, I knew this thing had bad thermals, but my god, I don't even... How does that even work? It takes it in from the bottom and then it blows it out through this tiny gap along the bottom side of the hinge. And if you open it up, well, then the air can actually escape. Ah, there it is. Okay. So the fans are actually positioned here along the, like, like actually the air blows up underneath the display, but also against the display. So heat will go here, but it would definitely flow uh, from the, the, the keyboard area. So yeah, that's a very strange design of where the like where the air goes like on the Lenovo I prefer it much more simply because it is you know it just has a few holes in the back you know lots of big holes and air can go through it quite easily ish for an ultrabook uh, well, actually uh, while well, well, we're on that subject the footprint of the laptops the Dell is slightly shorter like if you look at this you'll see that the Lenovo has a slight bit more laptop to it you see that? There's a slightly bit more laptop to it. I'll put a top-down uh, photo of it. But yeah, the Dell is like has a little bit less width to it. I think that's partly because of the hinge design. Um, but also, it had the Dell has a smaller screen. So yeah, it is still 16 by 9. It is still 16 by 9. But on the Dell, there's much less bezel now. You know, it still has the infinity bezel that they used to that they uh, like to call it. On the uh, Lenovo, however, there's actually uh, quite a bit of bezel compared to the Dell. Here it's very consistent. Also, the webcam on the Dell is back up top. It's not anymore on the bottom where it used to be, so that's awesome. Uh, it's still a 720p shitty camera, so if you're in bad lighting, don't trust that thing at all. It's terrible. It's awful. Uh, 720p cameras and laptops, I mean, it should really stop at some point, but they're still not doing it. I don't know why. Uh, nothing can beat the Surface uh, book at that point. Like, that thing has an amazing camera compared to these things. It's awful, this one. But, yeah, the camera's at least back at top, so, on the top, so, you know, that's, I, I'm, I'm a fan of that. So, while the Dell is still a 16 by 9 display, just like the Lenovo, the Lenovo has just so much more bezel around it. It has this giant black portion here, and the Dell seems to be very, very clean. So I'm very much a fan of that. So I'm going to be looking to make a bunch of videos about these guys. Um, it is actually going to be a very fun experience. Uh, this is a very long video. I'm really sorry, but I really wanted to cover everything as much as possible because a lot of reviewers miss out on a lot of stuff. And of course, the Dell software that comes with it, Cinema Color, the audio software. Oh yeah, that's one thing I really wanted to mention. I, I keep, this is, this is the stuff I keep saying, like, I keep forgetting to mention stuff. The speakers on the Dell, they, they, they're awful. Terrible compared to the Lenovo. The Lenovo has two bottom firing GBL speakers and they are awesome because of the Dolby Atmos integration. So if speakers are a must for you, stick to Lenovo laptops. Uh, if you want a competitor against the Dell XPS 15, get the X1 Extreme Gen 2 when it releases. It's gonna have even better screen. It's gonna have an HDR screen, by the way. By the way, it's gonna have a slightly less battery, but it's gonna have the same sort of performance, but better thermals. And it has the ThinkPad, that keyboard layout and touchpad. So 
good, good, good. Um, and, you know, all the extra features that the Dell also has. But, like, if you, you, you got to think about it then. Do you want more battery life? Or do you want good speakers? I mean, I'm also, I'm always wearing headphones. So, for me, it must have been battery life. I much more prefer that. By the way, Dell comes with their own power, uh, power uh, setup for the laptop. They have their own power profile inside Windows. Uh, that is recommended for using and that is also something to keep in mind you shouldn't touch it <laughs> because it actually helps preserve battery and, and all that stuff and keeps performance high so that's very cool and then again of but, but speaking of performance this is something that i really have to talk to you about is that the before i keep putting the wrong finger on it the thing that you really have to keep in mind with the dell is that there is a problem when it comes to the performance of this laptop because it sucks too much power like above gaming laptop performance levels that this thing just shouldn't do so i would recommend installing intel extreme uh tuning utility it is a tool just like undervolt uh, like a uh, throttle stop to undervolt and that sort of stuff but then from intel itself it didn't work on my lenovo it does work on the dell xps and this tool is going to help you set those limits. So actually, let's do that together right now, because this is something that you simply must do. So when you're in the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility, when it opens up, you want to go to the All Control section here, and you want to set the core voltage offset to like as, as low as you can go, which I think a good recommendation would be to go one minus 150, so minus 150 millivolts. Uh, to undervolt it, but this is the big the big kicker. So the turbo boost power max. So when the, the process of turbo boost, it uses up to a specific wattage of power, and this is 65, 56 watts. Sorry, 56 watts is way too much. Gaming laptops don't even suck that much. Gaming laptops do about 30 watts. This thing with its thermal capabilities or well thermal limitations rather, it shouldn't even touch these numbers. So what we're going to do is we're going to go way back to about, I would say, 25 watts. Okay, so 25, oh, sorry, 25 watts. I don't want to go much higher nor lower than that. You can go up to 30 or something like that, but try to keep it as low as possible because this is a serious problem when it comes to the Dell XPS is that because it like can go up to turbo boost, so high it means that it's actually going to do that most of the time to increase frame rates in games as well but the problem with that is that if you were to do that then the frame rates would be very inconsistent if you would go from 100 frames to 60 frames and alternate between it all the time as it starts turbo boosting and then stops uh, turbo boosting so by keeping this lower the temperature is not going to go up as high which means more consistent frame rates while lower frame rates but more importantly consistent frame rates and that's what we're aiming for so you want to start at like 25 watts and like try to go up from there and see how far you can push the thermals up to 80 degrees and beyond that i would say don't touch it because you really want to keep this thing thermally clean because it also it already has such a limitation and at that point you just press apply and you can save it as a profile if you want to and uh, that is it that's all i want to tell you Okay, so while I know that this has been a very long video, and I thoroughly appreciate you staying for this long, but this has pretty much covered all of the information that I can give you from my first impressions on the Lenovo, and it's absolutely amazing, this thing. This thing is gonna rock my world. I'm gonna get a deep brand skin for it, and it's gonna be awesome. I wanted to doubt between the touchscreen 4K model, but now seeing the matte screen and seeing how the colors pop just as well as on the gloss screen of my Lenovo, I'm not gonna swap it. Yes, the matte screen damages more easily because it is plastic, but I really do not care at this point. The performance in sunlight is so much better that I'm actually gonna be able to go outside and do my programming instead of sitting locked up in this room all the time. So that is a huge plus point, and this thing is the perfect creator's dream. And because of that sRGB value that's so high, this is great for photo and video editing, but then again, because it doesn't have the best Adobe RGB, you could argue that this thing is not meant for cinema work, but, you know, this thing was never meant for cinema work. I'm doing YouTube videos, and you know what? For that, this thing is just great and perfect at what it does. Video editing performance is solid, and, you know... 
it's 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 good. It's really good. So yes, this is sixteen hundred and fifty euros with a ten percent discount. That is the student discount from Dell. I would highly recommend you get that, and then you can actually get this thing for a reasonable ish price of sixteen hundred and fifty with the sixteen gigs of RAM. You don't need the sixteen gigs of RAM. You can go lower than that. Go for a fifteen hundred, fourteen hundred model, and then you get the eight gigs of RAM model. Um, I mean, this thing could do with 8 gigs of RAM and still do all the Adobe programs. So I am not seeing it any problem on a Dell laptop. But in case you need the 16 gigs, I mean, get this thing. It's absolutely awesome. So I'm going to make a ton of videos more about this thing, just like on the Lenovo. But this time much more positive, probably not as much negativity. And yeah, again, thank you guys so much for watching. It's super long, I know, but this is all the information that I can give you in as short amount of time as possible. And again, this is the first impressions, but at the same time, a comparison between the Lenovo Yoga, which most of you guys were here for, and then the Dell XPS 15, the replacement. So, 1,077 euros, 1,650 euros with a 10% discount. I mean, that's a huge difference, but it's a great step up. And you know what? I've worked really hard for it, and I think I deserve it. And then the final news. The Ryzen 3900X has been pre-ordered with a undetermined delivery date. So stay tuned for that as well for months because I don't see that thing coming to the Netherlands anytime soon. But yeah, again, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you like this. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any further questions or whatnot. I want to answer literally all of them. And yeah, seriously, thank you for watching. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.